This video is to show level three exercises for post-surgical of the lumbar spine. Follow the instructions per your physical therapist if you are ready to perform level three exercises. At this phase, you may also progress to 60 minutes of gentle cardiovascular exercise, including walking, light jogging, and light swimming. You may also start resistance exercises that include walking hills, resistance training, and other light impact activities. You may also start yoga or Pilates, but please use an instructor or get a recommendation per your physical therapist. Exercises performed in this phase are also performed three to five times a day, five to seven days a week. Start with the abdominal bracing exercise and hold for 30 seconds. This is a good warm up to start your exercise routine to get your body reacquainted with your abdominals and your core. After performing the abdominal bracing for 30 seconds, go into your pelvic tilt progressions. As always, start on the ground with both knees bent. Perform 10 repetitions. With this consistent practice, you should feel that this exercise is fairly easy and can perform without much effort. Perform 10 to 15 repetitions of each phase of the progression, but continue to work through all the phases so that you have a good warm up for your core, pelvis, and spine. Again, if one area feels harder or one phase feels harder to perform than another, spend more time performing that phase with more repetitions or add another set. Continue to breathe normally as you perform each repetition. You shouldn't be holding your breath as you perform these repetitions. Maintain good control of the movement. And try not to rush through the repetitions just because you have been performing these for several weeks at this point now. After you finish your pelvic tilt progression, do a set of bridges with both legs, about 10 to 15 repetitions, to help and continue to improve your glute, hamstring, and core strength. Again, practice your normal breathing, 
and feel the appropriate muscles working. Then progress into the next phase of bridges with one leg extended as you bridge. Perform 10 repetitions on each leg for one to three sets. Again, focusing on maintaining a level pelvis as you take one foot away and remain in control of your abdominals. Once you finish all your sets and repetitions of the bridge with the hip extended, move on to the cook hip lift to further help strengthen the glutes. Perform 10 repetitions on each side for one to three sets. You may notice that you cannot go as high as in the bridge this is again to help control your lumbar spine and truly use your glutes and hamstrings for the hip extension. After you finish this exercise, you will move on to doing the piriformis stretch. Hold for 30 seconds on each leg. At this point, your flexibility and tissue tolerance to the stretch should be greatly improved. Even though you might still feel a slight stretch, breathe through it, letting the tissues relax. After finishing the stretch, you'll go on to the intermediate and or advanced phases of the bird dog exercise. So make sure you find your neutral spine, perform your abdominal bracing, and then place one foot out on the floor and opposite hand, and lift and lower hand and toe to the floor, maintaining a level pelvis, and lifting through your glutes and shoulders and not providing or performing an arch in your back. After 10 repetitions on one side, switch to the other and perform 10 more repetitions. If you find this version difficult, perform three sets at this variation. If you feel comfortable with maintaining, you may perform the advanced or the full version of the bird dog exercise, which includes lifting and straightening your arm and opposite leg out in a straight line, 
setting down and then switching. Again, you shouldn't have a lot of movement and extension through your spine, but moving more through the extremities. Breathe normally and don't allow for a lot of hip movement and maintain that abdominal brace. Perform 10 repetitions on each side for three sets. Once you complete that, you're going to go to the dying bug or dead bug intermediate and advanced phase. Start in a dead bug position with your back in neutral spine, abdominals braced, legs in what we call a tabletop position, 90 degrees at the hip, 90 degrees at the knee, and arms towards the ceiling. Hold this for 30 seconds as you breathe normally. Don't allow your, arc, your back to arch away from the floor and try not to flatten it into the floor to create a false sense of an abdominal contraction. After 30 seconds, come down and take a break. If that was challenging, repeat. If you felt comfortable with that exercise, perform the full dying bug. So find the same starting position, and much similar to the bird dog, you are going to straighten out one leg and opposite arm without allowing movement through your core. Don't allow your rib cage to flare as the arms come overhead, or your low back to arch away from the floor as your leg goes out straight. Perform 10 repetitions on each side for three sets. As we continue with the phase three exercises, we will add in more advanced core work. The next exercise is a single leg lowering to help isolate hip flexors from your abdominals. Lay on your back with your knees bent up, find your abdominal brace, and then lift one leg towards the ceiling. Lower down with maintaining control through your lumbar spine without letting your low back arch away from the floor as the leg lowers. The leg should move in separation of your trunk. Perform 10 repetitions on one leg and then switch to the other. If you're able to maintain good control, you can perform more sets or you can go to the advanced phase of double leg lowering. Make sure you start in your good starting position, take in a deep breath, and find your abdominal brace. Raise both legs towards the ceiling and lower them down towards the floor without letting your stomach bulge or your low back arch. Only lower as far as you can without losing form. If you feel like your back or tummy is going to give, meaning your low back arch or your tummy bulge. Stop just shy and raise the legs back up towards the ceiling. The goal of this exercise is to strengthen the hip flexors in separation of the abdominals and learn further control of your pelvis, hips, and lumbar spine. Next is the scissoring exercise, another hip flexor and abdominal strengthener. Find your abdominal brace. Bring your legs straight out about six to 12 inches off the ground, and then crisscross your feet back and forth to create a scissoring motion. Perform 10 repetitions going each way or count to 20 total. Take breaks as necessary if you feel that your form is giving, meaning your low back starts to arch from the floor or your starting position or you lose your abdominal brace. Then we will go to bicycling to add in more of the upper abdominals. Start in the same position as the scissoring position. Then place your hands behind your head to support your head and neck as you bring elbow to opposite knee. Make sure that you're lifting and twisting through the core, not just the shoulders and the neck.
You're going to perform 10 repetitions on each leg. And if you feel that your form gives out on you at any point, take a break, reset your abdominal contraction and abdominal bracing, and continue your repetitions. This exercise adds in more obliques, upper abdominals, and hip flexors. You will then go into planking at this phase. If you need to, start on your elbows and forearms. Lift your knees off the ground and find your abdominal brace. Make sure that your hips don't sag or lift and that you don't sink through your shoulders. Think about pushing yourself away from the floor as you maintain stability through your abdominals. Hold for 30 seconds and then come down and repeat. If that felt easy and you had good control, place your hands underneath your shoulders and push yourself up into the plank. Again, don't let your shoulders sink, your hips sag or raise, but maintain a nice neutral spine Hold for 30 seconds or one minute. Come down to rest and repeat for another set. If that does feel easy or not enough of a challenge, you can try a plank variation that includes hip abduction. Find your starting plank position and then maintain that neutral spine as you touch your legs out to the side. Perform for one minute for 10 toe touches on each leg. Don't let your form fall as you perform this exercise. Continue to talk to your physical therapist on which progressions and variations to perform.